Until this last century, man has always found a way to get animals to do the work for them. Of course, that job has now been taken over by assistant managers. But the instincts are still there, so now we got animals to play on our entertainment. In movies, on TV, and as the featured act in them theme shows. I think it's just man's way of reaffirming his dominance over the animal kingdom. We'll take a killer whale, plop it into a swimming pool, and force it to do backflips through a fiery hoop just to earn a free lunch. It's not smart or correct, but it's one of the things that makes us what we are. The Surgeon General has declared that smoking is hazardous to your health. Stay tuned. Bill and I are going to go fishing in a rubber raft, which is not completely successful. And our old pal, Buzz Sherwood, is going to say hello to Harold. I always like it when he, when he hurts Harold. <laughs> oh. And now here he is, the master of all he surveys. But only because he's extremely short-sighted. <laughs> My uncle, Mr. Redbreen! Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, it's, it's, it's true, I am short-sighted, and I can prove that by hiring him to direct and produce my show. <laughs> I'm Harold, and I'm here, and I'm hip, and I'm happening. And your history. <laughs> this is gonna be the last episode of the Red Green Show as we know it. What? Well, how, well, how, what, what, we're canceled? No, we're not canceled, Harold. It's just that I, I think I've got a better idea. We're not gonna, we're gonna change the format a lot. It's gonna be Red's Water Wonderland Marine Extravaganza. <laughs> Oh, this is because Junior Singleton took his family to Florida, right? Oh, Harold, he tells me that the sea world down there is just raking the cash in. People love to see fish doing tricks. Of course, you've proven that. <laughs> so we're going to replace you, Harold, with uh, the killer whales and the seals and the porpoises and the dolphins and the manatees and all that kind of stuff. Well, have you, have you got any of these animals yet? No, but we've got an aquarium, Possum Lake. <laughs> and we got a rusted out van for the fish to jump through and we got a whole bunch of stuff to balance on their noses. Yeah, but, but you have to have performers. I mean, you can't do a show without talent in front of the camera. <laughs> we have for years. <laughs> Did I say can't? I meant shouldn't. <laughs> oh, the fire in my eyes could not disguise how I felt for Heather. She held my hand like I was her man and said, zip our sleeping bags together. Well, I complied in a hurry, but she said, wait, you're not worthy. And all hope of romance was killed. My love, she turned her back on cause my bag was only Dacron, whereas hers was the more expensive goose down Phil. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you got yourself splattered across the couch watching TV, grazing the dial with your thumb, snapping on the remote by the sending Morse code. Phase number one. Your wife says, hey, stop flicking around like a rabid banshee. You're giving the dog a conniption, eh? <laughs> Find a channel and stick to it. And then you answer that you can't figure out what you want to watch until you see everything that's on. <laughs> and you say all of that without taking your eyes off the TV screen. Phase number two. She suggests the TV Guide, which is what it's for. Right, now you gotta tell her that your glasses are over on the table and the TV Guide is up on the back of the toilet. <laughs> Phase number three, she picks up her knitting or a book or something. Yeah, and then you find out what you wanna watch. A comedy, sporting event, and one of those shows where guys are shooting people. <laughs> and you're gonna watch all three at once. <laughs> then all of a sudden, something really exciting happens on the comedy, eh? Like, uh... Hawkeye finds a date for radar or something like that, eh? Yeah. yeah, so you start watching that for a while, and then your wife starts watching it with you. But then the commercials come on, and you start thumbing your way on to a better show. <laughs> Phase number four. Your wife gets up, leaves the room, buys herself her own TV, and files for divorce. <laughs> but it could happen. All right, well, life is about choices. And you cannot have a successful marriage and a TV remote. So I say go for the successful marriage. Well, unless the playoffs are on or it's sweeps week. <laughs> well, with everybody thinking about our new marine show, I thought I'd take Handyman Corner, show you all how to build an aquarium. Because when you think about it, 
What is an aquarium? Just a glass box with a big price tag. So all you need is a couple of windows that are made into different panes here. You can usually get these at your neighbor's house while he's at work. And then what you gotta do is uh, get a, scrape the putty off there so you can get the windows out. Oh. Oh, well, then. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use uh, maybe a propane torch of mine and just melt the putty out of there. Where's that propane? Oh, there it is. All righty. <laughs> uh, this, this should work in no time. Shouldn't be any problem. Oh, well, uh, um, well, I'll just uh, get the fire. Fire! Thanks. No, I don't want, maybe I'll just, I'll just let the, let the flame just burn the putty out of there. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that uh, turned out real good there. And now all you got to do is uh, pick up the glass uh, out of the rubble using... Oh! oh. <laughs> All right, uh, you always want to let that glass cool down when you use this technique. Uh, here's something that might be of interest to you. Uh, this is another handyman's helper. This is called silicon caulking. This stuff's got pliable glue, and it also uh, holds out water, so it's perfect for making an aquarium. <laughs> All right, now ready to put a little bit of water in that thing. Uh, you got to let the water get in there ahead of time so that, uh, you know, it can kind of sit in there, get all the chemicals out of it before you put the fish in there. <laughs> oh, um, all right, well, if, if you should happen to get a leak of some kind, don't feel bad about it, nothing to be ashamed of, it's no one's fault, and the solution is very simple, more caulking. <laughs> there, that should do it. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> Smells like a prehistoric order of fish and chips in here. <laughs> but I bet we got the leak fixed. <laughs> uh, no, no, not quite. Uh, I think this is going to take me a little longer than we, we had figured on, so uh, why don't uh, we get back to the show, and I'll call you when I'm done. <laughs> Stay tuned. Bill's going to show you what happens when you have a leak in your inner tube, and Harold's going to audition for the Marine Show. I want to talk to all you middle-aged guys out there who, for whatever reason, have abandoned your dreams. Maybe you dreamed of being an astronaut and you ended up as a space cadet. <laughs> Maybe you dreamed of being an award-winning statesman and you ended up as a ward of the state. <laughs> or maybe you dreamed of being an Amway salesman and you are. <laughs> whatever the disappointment, at this point in our lives, we shouldn't be bitter. Maybe we set our goals too high. My personal goal was to set the land speed record in a rocket car that I would design, engineer, and build. But in retrospect, I, I think that was a bit of a long shot, especially after I dropped out of junior high. <laughs> that would have been the last half of our lives. We've got to stay ambitious, but maybe we should make our dreams just a little more realistic, eh? Why don't you vow to go to your grave with at least one of your own teeth? <laughs> Maybe you could try to do something nice for somebody every day, even if it's not telling them what you're really thinking. <laughs> I'll tell you something, I'm gonna keep my dream no matter how old and run down I get. Even if I end up in a wheelchair, I'll turn it into a rocket-powered wheelchair. <laughs> so remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. <laughs> Red's Water Wonderland Marine Extravaganza has already booked its first major star attraction. Someone from the cast at Baywatch in a bikini. That's the gun. No, Harold, Moose Thompson got us a real live sea creature, one that already had his own TV series. Flipper, he got Flipper. Oh, I love Flipper the Dolphin. Oh, he was so cool. He saved hundreds of lives in his show. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. I love Flipper the Dolphin. Yeah. No, no, Moose got us Flopper, the musical manatee. <laughs> Flopper the manatee? Yes. Had his own series? He certainly did, Harold. It was Flopper's Ragtime Riverboat Review. It was on community access until the community saw it. <laughs> and Flopper kind of went downhill after that. Went a bit astray on us, but uh, has gone to the Betty Ford Aquarium. <laughs> got himself all cleaned up, lost 900 pounds. He's coming back in great form, going to do the back flips and jump through hoops and balance stuff on his nose. What about me? 
Well, you're a little heavy to balance on his nose, on here. <laughs> no, I mean, like, what about me and the new show? Is there a place where I fit into the new show? Oh, sure there is, Harold. <laughs> well, we're gonna need an audience, aren't we? <laughs> Okay, we're back. And to make our aquarium work, I had to call in the handyman's secret weapon, duct tape. <laughs> I guess we all know she's gonna be watertight now, huh? <laughs> well, you're wrong. All right, so we're gonna have to adapt our initial plan. And for that, you're gonna need another sheet of glass and a piece of tin foil. All right, you tape the foil to the sheet of glass, and then you tape the glass onto the top of the aquarium. And then you just set the angle of that, like a mirror, to wherever you happen to be sitting in the room, because uh, unfortunately, this is gonna be really your only view of the fish. <laughs> on the bright side, it is showing a certain amount of respect for the, the privacy of the fish, is it not? <laughs> so remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Oh, boy, uh, basin lakes. Uh, well, I, I suppose I could put more coffee on that, or... No, I could throw this whole unit into a bathtub. <laughs> or into a dumpster. <laughs> Here we are with our resident bush pilot, Buzz Sherwood. How you doing, Buzz? Hey, it's the big red guy! <laughs> <laughs> hey, Harold, a house directing. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> so, Buzz, uh, you want to do some flying today? Sure, sure, as long as it doesn't break any of my new air safety rules. Oh, like, yeah. uh... Rule number one. Man, I'm not finding any more lawyers up here. No way, man. On these hunting trips, all the time we're airborne, right? They go, Buzz, my door won't close properly. Or, Buzz, is the wing supposed to wobble like that? Or, Buzz, we didn't sign a release form, and that makes you culpable. <laughs> I suppose if I knew what that meant, I'd know how to react. Buzz, how do you feel about flying manatees? Manatees? Is that like those Mason or Shriner guys? Because I flew a fat Shriner. I was no, this no, 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 no. The manatees are kind of like a fishy mammal. There's two of them. They're kind of big. Probably looking at two and a half tons there. Oh, that should be no problem. I'll bring them in by the north end of the lake, away from the cottagers. But uh, there are a lot of tall trees up there, aren't there? Yeah, but not by my second pass. <laughs> 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 All right, then. Tell you what, uh, Moose Thompson will go along with you to supervise, all right? Whoa! Moose Thompson, no way, man. Too much weight. Now we're bending the needle. Uh, you, know what can do, mm. Ooh, you know what we can do? Oh, oh, Brill. What we'll do is we'll get Ranger Gord's fire bomber. Oh, the yeah. water bomber. It's a bigger oh, yeah. plane, right? Yeah. We'll fill that sucker full yeah. of water. Then manatees can just like wallow as we cruise them in. It'll be it'll be great. Is that legal? <laughs> All right. Just uh just don't tell anybody I could lose my pilot's license, right? Buzz, you don't have a pilot's license. Oh, right. <laughs> it's mail call. I have a letter today from David of Calgary, Alberta. And David asks, have you ever tried a MEP Cyclops? Oh, yeah, I believe I drank one of those when I was in the military. <laughs> Fire down one of those pups and last you a whole three-day pass. <laughs> Uncle Red, he's talking about a, a fishing lure. Oh, yeah, the, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, the cyclops. Yeah, oh, yeah, I know that very well, very well. But, you know, you get into endorsing fishing lures and so on, touchy area there, Harold. I mean, I've seen guys catch fish with a pair of pants on a coat hanger. Wow. <laughs> How do you catch fish with a pair of pants? Well, you go fly fishing. <laughs> but, you know, there are, there are so many factors there, Harold. There's the time, time of day, the time of year. There's the water temperature, the wind, the age of the fish, you know, and the, and the real true fishermen like myself uh, can take all these factors into consideration. Yeah. <laughs> How many fish would you say you catch on average? Oh, too many to count, Harold. Oh, I, I worded that wrong. I said, how many would you say you'd catch? Actually, how many would you really catch? <laughs> like, you know, in a year. A lot, Harold. <laughs> Quite a few. Pl a whole mess of them. More than a hundred? Well, you know, I get pretty busy with the show and so on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, it's less than a hundred. Well, it's more than can. More than you, Harold. I caught one last year. All right, we tied. <laughs> Bill had asked me to go fishing, and he said he'd bring the boat. I don't believe that's technically a boat, Bill. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 
now all we gotta do is load all the stuff into the boat. So it's now later that day. <laughs> We're been out fishing. The fish are probably finished and are at home watching one of the soaps. <laughs> anyway, as fishing, you gotta just kinda get into a mindset. You just relax, kinda wrap your legs around the cooler and go for it. <laughs> so I'm just trying to enjoy myself. And the way to do that, of course, is to ignore what Bill's doing, which in this case was a bit of a mistake. Bill, you're hooked into the, uh, the rubber raft there. Come on. Later that day. <laughs> and by golly, those things get heavy when they're full of water. As does Bill. As does my hat. What do you got there? Medical cushion. What's that for? <laughs> what is that, Bill? Is this some sort of a diversion from fishing? What's the idea? What are we doing here? Well, there's a bit of an example of overpackaging, I'd say. <laughs> or so is this show. What are you doing, Bill? You gonna blow that up? We can't get in there. That's not big enough for us to, no matter how much you... Okay, Bill, I, okay, I, yeah, I know, but still, it's not nowhere near... <laughs> well, it's still... Oh, well, well, oh, okay, all right. You're right, you're right. Captain, she's gonna blow. <laughs> So that's what we're going to use as an alternate. But I'm not, I decide not to go. Bill, I think that's more of a one-man fishing boat. Oh, a bit of a nail coming out of the dock there. You didn't notice that. In you go. In you go. Here you are. Bill, uh, let me get the equipment for you. All right? Let's get ready. Here she comes. What would you like? We've got quite a selection here. Oh, there's a No, sorry. 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 No, we're safe. Here we go. A couple of little tackle boxes. Life jacket. Paddle. Another paddle. Pail. A little uh, bait box. Fishing net. Got your lure in there and got some suntan. Oh, 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 boy. Holy cow. Bill, you can't throw with that speed. Throw it out. Come back, Bill. Oh, no, no, not this way. Oh. There we go. So, were they biting? Don't you know it's bad luck to come home wearing your boat there, Bill? Let me help you out of that stuff. Oh, it's line dancing at Possum Lodge. Stay tuned, Razor Gord tries to explain zebra muscles, and the Marine Show loses one of its headliners. Moose Can Fly, by me. Last winter, Junior Singleton drove my snowmobile a record 49 feet through the air, right over our tool shed. Today, Moose Thompson announced that records are made to be broken, but with Moose, Everything is made to be broken. <laughs> very, very exciting stuff now. Bob Sherwood and Moose Thompson have flown off to bring in Flopper. And uh, everything's falling into place. It's pretty darn exciting. Got a lot of other acts, too. We're going to start off with Old Man Sedgwick and his dancing bass. And we got uh, Junior Singleton's Magical Minnows. And then we're having a medley of songs from The Little Mermaid, sung by Sally Struthers. Wow. You really got old man Sedgwick's dancing bass? Yes, we did, Harold. And I just booked Smelt Boy. That would be Stinky Peterson. Wow, you found a smelt costume. It wasn't necessary, Harold. Anyway, uh, Flopper, of course. Flopper, the musical manatee, is still going to be the star of the show. And they said variety television is dead. <laughs> but Uncle Red, who are you going to get to uh, direct Flopper? Well, Flopper. That's Flopper's sister. She, uh, she's his manager, and she directs all of his live performances. Oh. OK, yeah, OK, live, sure. But, you know, has she ever directed a network television show before? <laughs> Yeah, I believe, I, I believe she did the third season of Who's the Boss? <laughs> anyway, they're all arriving later on today, and they're going to warm up in Possum Lake. Oh, yeah, but Uncle Red, Possum Lake is fresh water. Well, well, <laughs> fresh water, what am I saying? But no, it's like, um, it's unsalted, you know? And manatees live in salt water, so... Well, there's a job for you on the show. Really? Yeah, go salt up Possum Lake. Oh, I love show business. <laughs> It's time for the nature talk part of the show. We're here with our good friend, Ranger Gord. Hello, civilization. Yeah. Anyway, Gord is going to tell us about something that actually could put a kibosh on our whole marine show, namely, zebra mussels. Thank you very much, Red. Shall we wait for the rest of the guys to show up? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I just thought that uh, 
being at this fire watchtower for the last 16 years without a day off, they could give me a half an hour of it. All right, just tell us about the zebra mussels, Gord, would you? Yeah, the zebra is a member of the equine or horse family, and so the zebra's musculature <laughs> is very similar to that of a horse. All right. Now, the hind legs, just a minute, please, Red. The hind legs are extremely powerful limbs, and they can propel the animal for quite a distance at a single bound. Gord, we're not talking about zebras. We're talking about zebra mussels. You know those things like barnacles, they form on the bottom of boats? What? When did these things show up, just now? <laughs> Mid-80s. The government warned everybody to look out for them. I haven't heard a thing about it. The last I got from head office was a pamphlet about a, a new problem called acid rain. Might want to watch out for that one. <laughs> haven't got a thing from them since, Red. Hmm. Not even a paycheck. <laughs> Oh, but, but Gart, Gart, think about it this way. By the time they pay you that back pay they owe you, it's gonna triple the national debt, huh? National debt? Yeah, yeah. What, the country's in debt now? <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> well, Flopper and Flapper are not gonna be part of Red's Water Wonderland Marine Strategy. <laughs> what, I just salted up Possum Lake. It's like the Dead Sea out there. In more ways than one. And now the manatees aren't even coming? Oh, no, no. They're here, Harold. Buzz Sherwood flew them in in one of them water bombers he borrowed from a friend. But Moose Thompson went along for the ride, and you know how Moose gets nervous around big stars. Flopper and flapper? Yeah. Uh, Moose got all excited up there, and while they were circling, he pulled the wrong lever, opened the bomb bay doors. I gotta tell you, manatees are not your natural-born high divers. <laughs> Four tons of belly flop. Oh, no. Why is it the big stars always go down in, in plane wrecks? Why? Why? <laughs> they're not dead, Harold. They're just, well, they're a different shape now. <laughs> Well, I, I bet you, you know, he probably can't balance things on his nose anymore. Oh, you gotta be kidding. He could balance a piano on there. It's like a helicopter pad. But the flopper has decided to retire from show business, so I guess we're gonna go back to the old red-green show the way it was. Oh, so, oh, so who's gonna, like, you know, produce Slash Direct, Uncle Red? <laughs> well, I spoke to his sister, Flapper, but she wanted too much money. So... It's me, it's me! Oh, yes, it's, oh, it's me! Oh, oh. It's you, you will not regret this. Yes, I do. Oh, it's all quiet and possum. Oh, it's meeting time. Where are the guys here? <laughs> you go ahead, Harold. I'll be down when I get dried off. If my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, and uh, I'm bringing a picture of a sea cow autographed. If you can give that to your sister, the resemblance is unbelievable. <laughs> and to the rest of you, thanks so much for watching. And until next time, on behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Boston Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. Christmas show. Schindler's Christmas list. <laughs>